the feisty, war-painted, ivory-billed woodpecker, the extinct, most impossible bird on Earth. Holding the root in one hand, feeling the knobs and grains, the divots where they've grown against a rock. The front door rattled under a large boom as if it had been struck by a tree during a tornado. Her bird-like voice, her half-hearted cry, her affliction, a half-heart. My name is Ross Gay, and the name of my book is The Book of Delights. I was walking, I was having like a delightful day, and there were sunflowers and bees and all kinds of sweetness. And I thought, oh, it'd be a neat idea to write an essay about this experience of delight, which I called delight. And then a bird flew in my head and said, do it for a year. It was like that, just, oh, try to write an essay every single day about something that delights you. Shortly, I realized like, oh, there's moments of delight in most of my days, but it's a practice to, to attend to those moments of delight. My name is Maurice Broadus, and I'm the author of Pimp My Airship. It's basically the journey of, of three, three characters. See, I'm trying to think of how I would synopsize this book. This book is so silly. This all started as a joke on, on Twitter. I'm gonna write a steampunk story with all black characters in it and call it Pimp My Airship. Not too long later, a half dozen editors wrote me and said, when you're done with that story, send it to us. Uh, okay. Very few stories actually dealt with, well, where are all the black people in the Victorian era? Well, no one wants to write about that. What would it look like for me to center black people in this genre? Three of my favorite characters I've ever created, I send them on a wild adventure, and in the process, you know, once you're done, what I want the reader to have is this, this like, hey, that was fun. And I got to think about some things, too. That, that's what I wanted. My name is James Still, and I wrote The Jack Plays, a trilogy of plays. I wrote a trilogy of plays because I must be crazy. I actually was working on a new play. I suddenly realized I didn't know enough about these people to write this play. So I actually backed my story up six months, wrote a new play. Then I went back, which became the second play. And while I was writing that second play, I thought, you know what? I think there's a third play here. I hope audiences consider again how complex and funny and heartbreaking and hopeful families can be. Maybe it will help them look at their own families um, and that sense of navigating uh, grief and love. I'm Chris White and my work of fiction is The Life List of Adrian Mandrick. I wrote this book because I had been going through a very difficult time in my marriage which ended in divorce and I felt that there was a lot that I needed to sort of sort through and I think it started out with a little bit of anger and then sort of over the course of the drafts um, became empathy and compassion and what was first the antagonist of my book became the protagonist of my book. I think it was a journey that I felt compelled to take. I hope people get to laugh a little bit. I hope that they come out of reading it with a greater awareness of the sort of fragility of life on earth and the potential for healing if we're willing to sort of take a look at what's broken. My name is Phil Hose, and I'm the author of the book, Addicts, Oscar Robertson and the basketball team that awakened a city. There's no place on earth where basketball means more than Indiana. Indiana has a state high school basketball tournament. In a way, Addicts was able to use the tournament to make a racial statement that said, we're just as good as you are. The African-American community of, of Indianapolis didn't just uh, accept uh, racial segregation, but instead they fought. My name is Sandra Mitchell. All the things we do in the dark is about a sexual abuse survivor, a teenager, who stumbles over the dead body of a woman in the woods. And because of her experience going through the justice system, she decides that she's going to solve the murder rather than give the body to the police. I wrote this book because I'm a sexual abuse survivor, and I have written for teens for my entire career. There are a lot of really amazing books out there that deal with 
the immediacy of a sexual assault, but there aren't really very many books that are about someone who is a sexual assault survivor. It was a very hard book to write because I went back to a dark place a lot, but I needed this book when I was 16 and I'm sure that there are teens now who need it. My name is Melissa Stevenson and my book is Driven. I wrote this book because in some ways it's the book I wanted when I was going through the experience of grief. When I went through the experience, there weren't many grief memoirs out there that I knew of. Writing this book was very much kind of filling that gap that I found. I hope people take away from the book that grief is a process you can go through, come out the other side of. Definitely different, I would say, but there's life on the other side of that experience. I'm Eugene Gloria, and uh, the book is called Sightseer in This Killing City. Poetry is everywhere, man. I mean, you pick it up anywhere. <laughs> I wrote this book because I was inspired by this um, marquee in Plainfield, Indiana. It had the sign, uh, Karate Guns and Tanning. And I thought, yes! Every time I'd see that sign, you know, I'm coming from the airport, going back home, I would see that sign and I would think, Ah, I'm home. I'm back in India. <laughs> to me, it's a, this is America. This is the essence of America. The idea of my sense of displacement living in Indiana, even though I've lived here for 20 years, writing from the perspective of a Filipino-American living in a predominantly white state. I mean, it's all part of the American experience for me, so I wanted to capture that in this book. And so the experience, I think, that I want my readers to get out of it is that they're hearing something in their inner ear that that will resonate with them whether they understand the poems or not i mean i think that's important you want a place where you could be quiet also a place that you can also be a little invisible to do your thing and um, that's always attracted me about this place indiana has kind of um you know, a dual personality. You know, Indianapolis is trying really hard and growing in a really amazing and wonderful way. And, you know, people out in, in the farmland where we're growing, of course, our corn, although there is more than corn in Indiana, you can be right there in the middle of that, that schism that we are talking about. It's beautiful. So many people give me the response, um, oh, I passed through there before, I think, on the highway. And it's so much is lost when we dismiss all this territory as flyover zone. So for me, it's really important to um, write about my experiences um, growing up there so that people maybe pause a little bit and think about the richness of the place. Over the years have come to really love it, not just in terms of the physical beauty of Indiana, but also uh, the people are so uh, generous and open-hearted and sort of solid and I love that. Like any place, the more you dig into a place, the more you discover. And that's been my experience both with the people that I've met in Indiana and that I know and have come to trust and, and are really part of my life, but also the history and the stories of Indiana. Look, I make no bones about it. I love Indianapolis. I love Indianapolis. 90% of my work takes place in Indiana or specifically Indianapolis. I went on a tour of downtown Indianapolis and went into those catacombs and I'm like, this place is amazing and it should be its own city. What would that look like? So for me, Indianapolis is me coming back to interrogate this fascinating character. I was born in South Bend. I lived in Angola, Indiana. I lived in Speedway, Indiana. I went to school at IU in Bloomington, Indiana. And I made so many friends, and so I've come to know so many authors and writers. You get an awful lot of support here. I have very important relationships and, and very important community friendships and projects. And here in Bloomington, there's an amazing, fluctuating group of artists and writers and stuff. And that feels important. I'm Marianne Glick. I'm the daughter of Eugene and Marilyn Glick, who started the Indiana Authors Awards, and I'm chairman of the board of Glick Foundation. My parents, Jean and Marilyn, were both really avid readers. Both of my parents actually wrote autobiographies about themselves. So not only were they active readers, they were active writers. The Indiana Authors Award was, was really a culmination of their desire to encourage others to do the same thing. I think it's important to foster the connection between writers and readers because we all need role models. I think the more that we can see someone who 
looks like us, that that's an inspiration to us to go, you know what, maybe I could do that.